hello once more. Welcome to this thought for the day from the Chapel's Royal in Her Majesty's Tower of London. I hope you all remain well and safe wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. Today is Tuesday the 23rd of February in this year of our Lord 2021. Last Sunday we took our usual stroll to get out of the house and to get some exercise. Unlike the panting lycra-clad enthusiasts who jogged past us on the pavement, we were not, I have to admit, making a huge contribution towards our physical fitness. Although I have to say that, to judge by their heavy breathing, some of them looked as though they might not make it home in one piece. By contrast, our leisurely constitutional took us, as usual, to the local Sunday farmer's market. I say farmer's market, but I'm not sure how near a farm the French Caribbean chefs had recently been, or the rather overexcitable man with the wild eyes extolling the healthful virtues of fermented tea. Informal food market would seem a better name for it, but let's not quibble. Did we need to buy anything? We did not. Did we buy anything? We did. One of the attractions of the thing, it's so international, from genuinely Swedish and French bakers to Welsh cheeses and Greek olives and oils. Especially in these days of continuing lockdown, it's a little bit like having a mini break in exotic parts, even if it's really just a cluster of stalls in the playground of a local primary school. So we succumbed more than once to temptation, which is probably not what you're meant to do especially in Lent. I hope we may be forgiven the odd slice of frittata or spanakopita. I mean, we have to keep body and soul together. And so that you will perhaps not condemn us for lax self-indulgence, we put our purchases in the fridge and shall consume them over the coming days. Thus, we return from our little local foraging foray with a far from empty shopping bag, but no Money changed hands. I mean that literally. No money changed hands. That is to say, the notes in our wallets and the coins in our pockets were still there when we got home. How so? Well, you will have got there before me. Every one of the stalls had contactless payment devices, and that's how we paid. One of the things that had assumed an altogether new significance during the current pandemic is contactless payment. It existed before, and people found it more or less convenient to use, but I doubt that many of us could have guessed a year ago that contactless payments would come into their own for health reasons, because they helped to curtail the spread of infection. Now, I am old enough to remember the first plastic payment cards introduced into this country. They were called access cards, and they were credit cards. People were encouraged to get them because they took the waiting out of wanting. Now that was a revolution far greater in my view than contactless payments. The cry of every frustrated child unwilling to wait for birthday or Christmas was always, I want it now. And adults are, in more than one sense, just big children. Many of us still recall that it was normal to have to accept that you simply could not have what you wanted as soon as you saw it. In a phrase that's almost passed out of the language, we had to accept that we should have to save up for it. Save up for it. Doesn't that have a quaint old fashioned ring? With the credit card came the slow death of delayed gratification. Now, I am not here to try to turn the clock back, but the advent of the credit card undoubtedly encourages impatience and a sense that it is not reasonable to be expected to wait for anything. We feel that we ought to be able to have what we want when we want it, even if we cannot currently afford it. This is not a moral essay about consumer culture, but you might agree with me about two things. The first is that the pandemic has challenged our hierarchy of values. Things that we took for granted are currently unattainable. 
we simply cannot have parties or go out to the theater or restaurant. Discussions about the relative merits of live theater or concerts against films or CDs have acquired a certain pointedness and at the same time a certain pointlessness. Choice has been taken from us. We have to make do with what is available. I imagine that many of us look forward to a time when we can once more sense the excitement as the house lights go down and the curtain rises or feel that expectation as that moment approaches when the conductor raises the baton and bow descends on string. But when those things return is beyond our control. Our gratification is compulsorily delayed. The second thing that I suspect we've all learned during the pandemic is patience. Many aspects of the measures put in place to prevent the spread of infection are intensely frustrating. As more and more of us get the vaccination, we shall no doubt increasingly champ at the bit. I do not know about you, but many times a day I find myself fantasizing about life post lockdown before I have to rein myself in. There's another horsey metaphor for you. And reconcile myself to waiting until it is safe. Because none of us is safe until we are all safe. But perhaps. The worst temptation would be to want to return to normal, if normal means how things were before the pandemic. If any good can be salvaged from this disaster, it must surely be the opportunity, the determination to build back more fairly for all. The coronavirus has highlighted and exacerbated social inequalities, which are a national shame and scandal. Many churches are closed for public services. That is a pity. But many clergy and their congregations have been freed to look outwards to their local communities and have found new ways of loving their neighbours, from food banks to debt hotlines and many other forms of social action. We have the chance to reflect on the inequalities shown up by the pandemic and to say, never again. These somber days of Lent are a time of delayed gratification of Easter. They're also a time for us to decide what sort of contribution each of us can make to showing forth our love of God and demonstrating that we love our neighbor as ourself. We do not have to leave it for another day. We can do that now. When it comes to showing loving kindness to our neighbor, we can indeed take the waiting out of wanting.